In this section, we'll learn how to create data from scratch using the tibble function from the tibble package that's loaded with tidyverse. Let's create a code chunk and make a really quick data set. We'll just call it data. Start with the tibble function. Now the tibble function, you can create your own arguments to the tibble function. The names of each argument are the names of your different columns. So we can make a column called A, and that will equal, um, we'll put together right now, we'll use the C function for concatenate. This just puts together a few different values. So one, two, three, four. And so make a vector here, and we'll make a column called B, and that will be the letters A, B, C, and D. And then the end parenthesis. One tip here, if you double click on a parenthesis, it will highlight up until the end of that one. So if you've forgotten one or put in too many, say I put an extra one here, I double click that, and it ends here. And I know it's not supposed to end there, so I can have a look at the end of this and see where did I put in too many parentheses? Okay, so let's run this function. The tibble function now creates a data frame with a column called A and a column called B. We can look at this data in the viewfinder. Here we are, column A, one, two, three, four, column B, A, B, C, D. Now we can use this data writing to create new data sets, it can be really powerful. Let's say you want to create um, a data set instead where you have responses from two different conditions in a study. So column A, your data are gonna come from a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of one, let's say. We can do this with the rnorm function and let's create 20 values with a mean of 10, standard deviation of one, and B, Let's say that those are half a standard deviation larger. So let's create 20 values there with a mean of 10.5 and a standard deviation of one. Okay. And we can see that there's this little red X. This means there's a problem in this row and there's a red underline here. So the problem's probably near here. I can see that I'm missing the equal sign. All right, so if I run that, we can look at data and now we've created a fake data set um, where we know the population parameters. We can practice doing things like a t-test on this data. Um, we'll learn a bit more about data simulation in later chapters. Once you have a data set that you've created, you can save it. So you can write a CSV file. Um, CSV is probably the easiest way to save your data. So we'll use the um, write CSV function from the read our package that's loaded with tidyverse. You see, what is the first argument? It's the data frame that we want to write. And so this is our data frame, it's called data. And our next argument is the path. So that's where do we want to write it to? Let's put it inside that data folder. So we type the name of the folder we want to put it in, type a slash and call it mydata.csv. Okay, now when we, run that function. We can look here in our files folder and see my data.csv. Have a look at it and it's created a comma separated variable file for you. Now let's make a more complicated table. Um, one of the characters from avatar. Using the tibble function we can add in the name of several different characters. So let's go for Katara, Tof, and Soka. Our next column is going to be, what is it that they bend? So water, earth, Soka doesn't bend anything, so we can use NA. So NA, not inside of quotation marks, just means not available, it's missing data. And say, are they friendly? 
And since that's going to be true for everybody, we can just type true, and that will, the tibble function will know that that needs to be applied to all of the rows. So if we run this, we can see our avatar data. Katara bends water and is friendly. Toth bends earth and is friendly. Soka doesn't bend anything, it's still friendly. There's another way that we can represent these data, though. We can use a different function called tribble. So let's get make avatar2. And this lets you create um, data tables by row. So the first thing that we do, instead of saying, what are all of the values in the first column, we say, what are all of the um, column headers going to be? And column headers are done in a special way. You use this tilde character to start with. So our first column will be name, comma. Our second column with tilde bends, comma. And our third column, tilde friendly. Put a comma at the end. Then you can skip a row. Remember, R doesn't care about what sort of white space you use. You could put each of these on its own separate row, like this but that's a bit harder for you to read, so I'd recommend putting them all in the same row. And then we've got, now we can give the values for row one. So Katara, and say what she bends, water, and is she friendly, true. Put a comma at the end. Now again, you don't have to skip a line, but it makes it easier for you to parse this if you do. Toph bends earth, and is friendly. Now we can't use the shortcut of just saying true once and then applying to everything when you're creating a table in this format, but creating a quick table in this format is sometimes a bit easier. So soka na true. And let's see what I did wrong here. Everything is still green, which tells me that I haven't closed a string yet. That is, um, I started a, a character string with double quotes. I haven't ended it. I needed to end it. There we go. Now I can run that. And Avatar 2 gives us the same table, just created in a different way. Now in the next section, we're going to learn a bit about basic data types. You need to know a little bit about this to be able to work with imported data to make sure that your data um, are represented in the correct way so that you can do things like mathematical operations with your data.